Okay, I'm going to provide a, a quick update on some of the things we've been working on in uh, Market 7. Um, we've been working on a, a couple of very specific things. Um, one is a set of wireframes um, and implementing those wireframes for some of the primary windows, particularly the main window, the Mark II's window, um, the preferences window. Um, slowly starting to work through um, what the Mark Editor will look like. Um, in addition to working with the wireframes, one of the things that I've been trying to um, think quite a bit about is uh, how uh, we deal with uh, accessibility um, issues within the application. Um, the program has um, always and will continue um, to utilize whatever um, accessibility options are turned on at the operating system level. Uh, but I realized that like um, any word processing program, um, if you spend enough time in it, uh, it starts to um, play, uh, starts to, to, to play havoc on your eyes. Um, so I'm starting to look, think about different ways that um, we can start to mitigate that, um, as well as uh, the ability to be able to turn um, certain kinds of functions on and off uh, so that uh, folks can have a uh, different experience. So um, let's take a look at uh, what the work that's been done thus far. So uh, this is the uh, wireframe for um, the main window. Um, you'll see there's these topics that are showing up. Um, I envision that these topics will uh, likely not be static, um, although that's still trying to be determined um, in this drop-down box. It's not enabled right now. Um, Every time you use a tool, um, the last 10 uh, will get populated into that box, which will allow um, users quick access uh, to the information um, in the record, uh, it, quick, quick access to any, uh, any of the last used tools that uh, they work through. Um, the other thing that I've changed is um, prior to uh, Mark Edit 6, um, the Mark Next uh, window was embedded into the main window. It now has its own space. Uh, this will make it a little easier for me to work um, on adding new concepts to that space. Um, you'll also notice the toolbar has been shrunk. That means that a lot of content has been brought into um, the tools window. Um, and for things like mark processing, you'll see that these have been brought into a secondary level. Um, all of these elements will get keyboard options. Uh, right now I'm going through the process of mapping all of the current keyboard outputs for every window and we'll be going through and creating um, mnemonics for alt key code combinations as well as control key combinations. Um, and after the work of mapping them has been done, um, I'll be providing a, um, a manual sorts of the keyboard shortcuts for folks that are interested. Um, plugins, um, the plugin manager has been moved here, um, and then help, you'll see some new help file options. Um, the biggest ones that are probably of most interest um, are in the troubleshooting area. Um, there is a troubleshooting wizard that's being created uh, that will be specifically used for being able to copy and paste um, error messages and be able to get a, an idea of, of what's being asked for. Um, if we look at Mark Tools, you'll see that the window has changed somewhat. Um, it's been compressed. Uh, the um, operations are now in a drop-down box. This is a searchable drop-down box, so if you start searching, um, you can select, you can find and then select the operation that you're looking for, and then the program will um, select the file, give you the file listing uh, appropriately for um, what you're working with. Um, that was something that you used to um, have to know that you'd select the file operation so the mark edit could uh, determine um, file types. Um, a lot of times that wasn't something that uh, uh, folks did and so you'd have to kind of make uh, some guesses. Uh, you'll also notice that here we've added the I would like to element. Again, I'm not sure how static those will be. Um, users can open and close that using control um, plus and control minus to open and close or they can just uh, click on the icon. If the window is closed, it will remember that for the next time you use it. If it's open, it'll leave it open. Um, this window used to be sizable at this point. I haven't set this up to be sizable. Um, we'll see if um, it needs to be. Uh, I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, 
let's see here, the other uh, wireframe that's been worked on has been the preference window, and I want to highlight a few things here. So one, you'll notice that topics have been um, grouped. Uh, you'll also notice a couple of them have gone away. Uh, you'll also notice some new ones. Um, so I am reorganizing what's in each of these. Uh, ease of use is a new um, uh, uh, element um, in the preferences, and this is the one I'm going to look at. Um, so by a uh, couple things, um, Mark Edit now has themes. Um, so we have uh, the default theme, which is by default, which is what we were looking at. Um, right now there are three themes. There's a high contrast theme, um, which uses a uh, kind of smoky black color and then um, a slightly off-white that's a little bit softer on the eyes um, that users can then um, use throughout the application. Um, there is also a dark gray theme, which is kind of a gray and a white. Um, and that gets propagated throughout the application. And then there is a completely white theme, because I heard from folks that this is still something that folks will like, which makes the program's interface completely white, which is a definite high contrast between the black and the white. All right. So the themes, um, I, I probably won't create many more than these three. Um, I'm kicking around maybe one or two more. It'll be particularly tied to um, colorblind this uh, particularly related to um, creating a color palette that is um, much more favorable for folks who have challenges with uh, blue, red, and green. Um, but for now, that's that's kind of the, the initial set of themes. Now, the nice thing about the, what's been done here is that the themes are essentially just XML files. So if we open up our shortcuts, um, we can see that there's a theme data file. Uh, this would be the dark theme here. And if we uh, take a look at it, uh, you can see that it's just an XML file. Uh, essentially, the name that gets shown is here. There are some global options that's set with uh, font color and background um, elements for just the Mark Editor. So you can actually have um, a dark theme that's dark everywhere but the Mark Editor window. It could be white and black still which is something I've heard often. Um, you have the ability to override fonts um, in the menus as well as um, links. So anywhere where you have a label that's clickable, that's a link, um, as well as setting the behavior. So the behavior by default in Mark Edit is no underline until you hover, but you can change that behavior. Um, I'll also be adding a couple of other options the more I've been thinking about this. So the ability to be able to set the font size and uh, font, um, type here globally, um, and if the, that's set in the theme, it'll override whatever the default mark edit settings are in the preferences. Um, I'm also kicking around the idea of being able to um, uh, modify things like uh, cursors and sounds, and I'll show you what I mean by that here in a minute. Um, so the other accessibility options that are being um, toyed around with um, as I've been going through some, doing some reading. Um, so one of the things that'll show up here is there will be a knowledge base article that's written. I've been spending a lot of time looking um, and documenting and cataloging um, different font types. So there's some open and proprietary fonts for folks who um, are dyslexic. Um, there are font types that um, are uh, better for uh, strictly Unicode. There are font types um, that have been designed uh, specifically um, with folks who happen to be have uh, color blindness challenges. Um, so um, one of the things I've been trying to do is sit down and start to catalog uh, where those resources exist. And in uh, this window here, um, but also in the, the knowledge base that it lives on the market website, um, I'll be pointing to um, where you can get that information. Um, you'll also notice two actions here. Um, these are themes. Um, the, because the themes are essentially just XML files, um, you'll be able to create new themes. And the idea is that when new themes are created, um, I probably end up storing them so folks can look for them um, and download them. So 
At this point, I'm thinking the theme creation will not be a standalone tool in MarkEdit, but actually be a web application. Um, that way it's really easy to um, handle um, the creation of the XML files, getting it into a database that's uh, shareable, um, and I'll just collect some uh, data that then we can send back um, to the application um, so that you can import uh, the theme data um, that you either create or have found in the, uh, the system. So the two other parts um, that I've been working on are feedback op back options. So by default, you'll notice when you click on these buttons, no sounds happen. Um, for some folks, um, the ability to have that feedback um, is important. Um, nothing in the application is, uh, is uh, done because of the sound um, or because of a color. I tried to keep them neutral, um, but I have found that some, some folks uh, would like to have the, um, the, the, the feedback um, that something has happened, some kind of click has happened. So if you check this option, um, anytime you click a button or a control, um, anything that performs an action um, will provide a sound. I'll show you what that looks like. Um, I haven't turned this one on, um, but this one here, um, mark edit. Um, I'm slowly going through and adding um, uh, accessibility names, uh, almost like alt tags and descriptions to everything that's not text, so all of the, uh, the images. Um, and what that means is, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, is that um, in a, a screen reader environment um, or in a, um, just a, a place where you'd like to, to see what these icons mean, um, you can now highlight them and the program will pull um, those accessible um, titles and descriptions and put them on the screen. So it has the description, it'll put them there with the, the title of the tool. For the user-defined tools, there's no descriptions because I don't know what those are gonna be, so you just get the name of the tool. Um, for um, other ones, though, you get the, those descriptions, so you can see anywhere where there's a picture, um, you see the um, that information shows up. Um, also, I think it shows up on here, you can hear it on the video, but when we click on Elements now, there's a sound. Um, so the application now um, is giving you back um, audio feedback um, when an action occurs. So I click on a button and uh, an action has occurred. Um, I click on a link and an action has occurred. So I start to get um, uh, both visual and audio feedback um, that something is occurring uh, in, the, um, in the set. And these sounds um, live in the theme folder. So they have to be WAV files um, because of the way that uh, uh, the application works. Um, so I have uh, these two WAV files here um, and I will likely include a couple more. And so the idea will be that at some point um, as I finish fleshing this out, I'll include the ability to select um, different uh, sounds in case that's something that um, you want to have is that uh, that audio feedback and honestly I didn't think I would um, in my normal everyday use um, but I actually found um, that uh, um, having that that audio feedback to tell me that actions occurred um, is actually kind of useful um, but you can see that the, the clicks happen there and when we turn them off um, mark it goes back and you'll see that those things go away and the sound's no longer a part of the, the, the application. Um, so the idea, um, in addition to a lot of other things that are going on in Mark Edit 7, um, is to really focus on, to some degree, um, the user experience uh, and try to provide an interface that's uh, a little bit easier to use, um, but also more customizable so that um, users have the ability to um, customize their work environment so that um, not just so that it's not just geared towards um, providing access to um, specific uh, tools so like the the main window here where you can set your most commonly used um, utilities but that you can also take advantage of um, the ability to customize the um, the, the, the visual and the audio feedback that you get from the application 
so that if you're spending, if market is a tool that you spend a lot of time in, that hopefully it helps to reduce some of the stress that happens on the eyes and, and makes it um, an easier application to work with um, long term. Um, anyways, uh, so I'll, I'll be continuing um, to rework wireframes. Um, my guess is most of the windows will get some updates. Um, the next space that I'll be revising will be the Mark Editor. Um, I'm also in the process of um, rethinking how Mark Edit integrates with OCLC, um, partly because um, I'm looking to leverage some more of their APIs, particularly some of their validation APIs, to allow people to, to choose the kind of validation that they want um, when doing validation. So right now in MarkEdit, you have the validation of um, is, are the fields, indicators, and subfields appropriate for my records? Um, is the structure valid? Um, but I know that some folks would like to take that a step further and say, um, is the data in my MARC records valid. And that's not something the MARC edit really is designed to do, um, partly because that becomes a very MARC 21-ism, and I try and stay agnostic. But um, OCLC does provide a validator um, for anybody who's an OCLC member. And so that seems to be a place where uh, potentially tighter integration would allow folks to uh, validate their records um, using OCLC's validation tools. Uh, integrated into Mark Edit um, and get back uh, immediate feedback, not just about the, the structure of the data, um, but the actual data that's that's in the records themselves. Um, so we're looking at I'm looking at some different things and um, uh, have been really appreciating the, the community's uh, feedback as we've been going through the uh, the development of the wireframes um, and the work through there. Um, so I will continue. Um, Hopefully folks who, who follow me on Twitter aren't having, uh, don't get tired of seeing um, the, uh, the continued development because um, I'm going to try and be uh, fairly transparent uh, as we go through this process. Um, anyways, that's, that's what I've got um, and where we're at right now. Um, hopefully uh, this is looking good. Um, and folks are interested in getting their hands on it. Uh, I anticipate the first um, public uh, version for folks to be able to get their hands on and, and play with um, and and will be able to be installed um, on the same machine that that a, a version of Mark at a 6 is installed on without any trouble um, probably sometime in in early or mid August um, at this point uh, based on the amount of time it's taking me to to um, create wireframes get feedback and, and implement changes so anyways, if you have any questions, um, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, um, keep an eye out for, for new stuff.